Okay, so um, we're going to be talking about, about series, uh, so-called infinite series, um, for, for the next, uh, next several classes. Um, and, you know, as, as you know, this is um, you know, where you're looking at uh, infinite sums, like you're looking at, say, for example, you know, one plus a half plus a third plus a fourth plus and you're wondering, you know, what, 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 is there any sort of meaning to this? Or, you know, one plus uh, minus one plus one minus one plus one minus one. You know, does, does, this, does this have any meaning? Um, the mathematicians in, I think, the 17th or 18th centuries were, were, were trying to make, make sense of these things. And like, what, what, should, what should these things mean, if, if anything? Um, right, one, like, one plus a half squared plus yeah, a third, I'm sorry, um, everything's you know, reciprocal, so some of reciprocal squared, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, you've probably seen some stuff like this before. Um, does anybody know uh, know anything about this one? Um, one plus a half plus, you know, the sums of reciprocals of numbers. This is something called the harmonic series. Harmonic series. And you may you may or may not recall that uh, it actually uh, doesn't converge. It actually goes to becomes infinite. Um, this one, on the other hand, um, where you take the sums of the squares of the, of the reciprocals, actually does converge, um, and oddly converges to pi squared over six. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so um, a fact that. Um, is easy to prove once you once you learn uh, a lot of more sophisticated math. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, actually, um, this fact, uh, if you're, um, this fact will actually prove in the Fourier analysis course um, next next spring. Just along the way, as just a side side note. Okay. Okay. So. Um, Okay, so series, right? So the first thing we need to do is introduce some notation. Okay, so um, if you have a sequence, so given a sequence, it's a bend. Um, when we write uh, something like this, a sub k, um, k goes from n to m, right? When we write something like this, you know, what, what this means is that, you know, you're taking the a sub k's as the index k ranges from from m from n to m, and then you're adding them together. So this would be you know a uh, a n a n plus one all the way up to a a n. Right. So hopefully uh, you you should have seen something like that before. Okay. And then, um, so this is just a notation. Um, uh, if we have, um, uh, so again, given a sequence, so a sub n sequence, um, the sequence of partial sums. Sequence of partial sums, um, uh, uh, S of n, of of this sequence, right, of of this sequence, A sub n, um, is defined as um, where S n is the sum of the A sub k's as k goes from one to n. Okay, so right. So for example, you know, if we're looking at um, a sub n equals one over n, then the sequence of partial sums. So you know, the this this, this sequence is um, you know one one half one third one fourth etc. Right, and s one uh, the sequence of partial sums just means you sum up to that up to that term. Right, so s one is just one. S two is one plus a half. S three is one plus plus a half plus a 
other, and so on and so forth, right? So your your um, your the sequence of partial sums, right? You're not summing everything, but you're summing up to a certain point. Okay. So this thing here's your sequence, and then and then this is the sequence of partial sums, the partial sum sequence. This guy here is the partial sum sequence. Okay, so you have a sequence. You have the sequence of partial sums, um, and uh, if the sequence converges to some value s of n, um, some value s, sorry. <laughs> Converges to some value s, then we write the, C, the infinite the, the sum of the a sub k's as k goes from one to infinity uh, is s. Okay, and say you know, the infinite series. Converges to S. Okay, so if we write something like, if we write something like summation one over n squared as n goes to one from one to infinity equals pi squared over six, mm -hmm. what that that's an abbreviation basically. That's an abbreviation saying that if you take the sequence of partial sums of this, then that sequence of partial sums converges to pi squared over six. Okay, so this is an abbreviation. It's the same thing as saying that um, the sequence S of k, where k is the sum of the n squared from n equals one to k. So this sequence, uh, this sequence, converges to pi squared over six. Okay, so whenever we're talking about series, we're secretly talking about you know, sequences. Okay, the, we're, when we say the series converges, what we really mean is that the se its sequence of partial sums converges. So it's, everything in series is basically referred back, referring back to the stuff that we did before about sequences. Okay, okay. so yeah. So, um, yeah, so, um, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so let me just make it, you know, make it very clear that um, convergence, convergence of an infinite series is the same thing as saying um, convergence of its partial sum sequence. Okay. And that's not a that's not a logical equivalence. That's that's a definition. Right? By definition, those things are the same thing. It's not that one implies the other and the other implies it. It's that's just the definition. Mm -hmm. That's a D. Uh, right? That's a Greek D. So sometimes you'll see me write it as to indicate something is definition. Okay. Um, okay. So basically, what we're going to do is pull forward all our statements of about sequences into statements about series. Okay, so, um, um, okay. So, uh, now we're gonna be dealing with um, uh, uh, sums, you know, when, when, we're, when we're talking about sums, we're talking about sums of, you know, real numbers or, you know, ser infinite series of real numbers or infinite series of, of complex numbers. Okay, in either case, you know, the real numbers or the complex numbers 
those are um, uh, those are complete metric spaces, right? So um, we'll be considering you know, sums of you know where the a, you know, AK are are complex numbers, say, right? So um, since K is since C, since C is complete. Um, convergence of the partial sum partial sum sequence is the same thing as the partial sum sequence being Cauchy, right? Because because C is complete, right? So convergence of the partial sum sequence is the same thing as the, the partial sum sequence being Cauchy. Okay, and that leads to something called the Cauchy criterion. So that um, this gives us something called the Cauchy criterion for convergence. Okay, and the Cauchy criterion says um, uh, says that a um, a series converges. Uh, if and only if, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n such that um, if n and m are bigger than n, uh, then summation a sub k from n to m uh, is smaller than epsilon. So right, um, so right. What is what is the saying? This says that um, uh, right. You can think of this thing as like a, a part of the tail, right? This is um, right. If we're uh, you know we're summing, we're just summing. Um, uh, you know, you, we're just we're just summing part part of the sequence, right? We're just summing part of the sequence from from here to here, right? And so what this is saying is that um, con what does convergence mean? Convergence means that you can make these these uh, sums these partial sums of the tail as as small as you want. Okay, right. So that's that's what convergence means that you have control over the size of these you know, pieces of the tail. You can make these these things as small as you want. So let's see why that makes sense. Right. So um, I'm going to let, as usual, S of n denote um, denote the partial sum sequence from one to n. Okay. Then um, for the series to converge. Is the same thing as saying that S of n converges by definition, right. but because we're complete, that's the same thing as saying that S of n is Cauchy. Right, but Cauchyness Cauchyness means that. Um, what does Cauchyness mean? What does Cauchyness mean? Anybody remember? Don't look at your notes. Anybody remember in your in your mind? Yes, and um, it just means past a certain point, um, all SNs are within a certain distance of each other. Yeah. So given given any given any distance, there's a time past which everybody's within that distance of each other. Right. So, given any distance, there exists a time um, 
right? Depending, depending on that, depending on that distance, there's a time uh, past which um, um, all uh, all S N S M are within epsilon of each other. Right? So all these S and S M are within within epsilon of each other. Let's assume that um, uh, let's assume that M is bigger than N. Okay, it doesn't matter. So um, pick uh, M and N that are both bigger than this N epsilon. Then um, we know that the SM minus SN is smaller than epsilon. Right? Okay, but what's SM? SM is the sum of numbers, the, the sum of the, the, the things from, from one to from indexes from one to M, right? And Sn is the sum of, of indices of the guys from whose indices range from 1 to n, right? So when you take this guy minus this guy, right, what do you end up with? Well, you end up with summation um, a sub k from k equals uh, n plus 1 up to n, right? So in other words, that tells you that this is smaller than epsilon. And maybe I should, I mean, I'm a little bit bugged because I've got an n plus one here, but it doesn't really matter. I hope you, I hope you see it doesn't really matter. I can pick, you can fix that up by changing this to making n minus one bigger than, making n minus one bigger than, bigger than epsilon. Then this minus, this is smaller than epsilon, which gives us this. Okay. So in any case, it, it that, that's, that really doesn't matter. Okay. So what do you see? You see that you know, convergence, um, uh, convergence of the series, is the same thing as you know being able to, being able to control the the size of the partial tails, partial sum tails. Because okay, right. because convergence convergence of the series corresponds to convergence of the partial sum sequence, which corresponds to the cauchiness of the partial sum sequence. Cauchiness of the partial sum sequence means exactly this, right? That given any epsilon, you can find a time past which um, you know, the, the, the size of the tail is smaller than epsilon. Okay. So it's, this Cauchy criterion is not, not anything deep. It's just like, what does that, what does that, what does convergence mean? Okay, it's not deep, but it's, it's we'll use it a lot. Hey, does it make sense? Okay. So, um, so let me observe, so Mark, so observe in particular, This thing converges, then uh, you know, given any epsilon, there's this time past which um, uh, S n plus one minus S n is smaller than epsilon. Or maybe let me write it this way. S n minus n minus one is smaller than epsilon. Right. Okay. 
right? But what's Sn minus Sn minus 1? Natalie? Uh, of the A sub n. A sub n, right? So let me just cross this out. Absolute value of A sub n is less than epsilon n, right? So if this thing converges, given any epsilon, you can find a time past which the, the a sub n must be smaller than epsilon, right? That's the same thing as saying that the limit of the a sub n's is what? Given any epsilon, right, here's zero. Given any epsilon, you can find a time past which the a sub n's are all, uh, you know, smaller than, smaller than epsilon. What does that tell me about the a sub n's? The a sub n's go to n? Zero. Zero, right? They converge to zero, right? Maybe it's, it's clear if I read it like this. The distance between a sub n and zero is smaller than epsilon, right? It's the same thing, of course, right? Right? So, so what is that, right? So, um, this is just um, one, like, a, 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 a consequence of the of Cauchy criterion, right? And the consequence. So we have this corollary, right? Corollary. Um, if a sub n converges, then a sub n must converge to zero. If this, if the series converges, then the terms must converge to zero. That's something that you've, you've probably seen before. Right. Um, the, contra the contrapositive statement is that if a sub n doesn't converge to zero, then the series diverges. Right? The series does not converge. Okay, so this is sometimes called the divergence test. Right? If the terms don't go to zero, you know that the series diverges. Another observation. Suppose the sum of the absolute values converges. Okay. Suppose the sum of the absolute values converges. Okay. By the Cauchy criterion, that's the same thing as saying that for all epsilon greater than zero. Um, there exists an n such that if n and m are bigger than n, then the absolute value of the sum of the absolute values of the a sub k from n to m is smaller than epsilon. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, right, because look, right, I'm just, I'm just applying the Cauchy criterion to this, to this series, right? Cauchy criterion says your series converges is the same thing as saying that the size of the, size of the partial tails can be made as small as you want, right? So you if this guy converges, it means that, you know, it's, it's tails, it's tails can be made as small as you want, okay? But notice, look, if this, if this is made smaller than epsilon, well, this thing is smaller than smaller than this, right? The sums of the absolute values is definitely bigger than the absolute value of the sums. That's the triangle inequality, right? But then, this thing 
can be made as small as we want, right? So um, for all epsilon greater than zero, there's a time past which these guys are smaller than epsilon as well, right? What does that tell me? That tells me that this thing converges, right? Because that's the Cauchy, that's the Cauchy criterion for for this sequence for this series. Right. So, what do you see? You see that if the absolute values, if the sum of the abs if the series of absolute values converges, then the original series converges. Okay, so, um, um, right, so, um, if, this is, this is called, um, uh, so let me put some definition here. If this thing converges, we say that the series converges absolutely. Okay, or is an absolutely convergence, absolutely convergent series. Okay, and what, what this observation is saying is that if the series converges absolutely, then the original series must actually must, must converge. That absolute convergence is is more restrictive than convergence. Okay. So uh, the observation demonstrates. For a series to be absolutely convergent, implies that the series is convergent. Yeah, no. Uh, I was just going to ask: Is the if the original series is convergent, is the uh, absolute value series part version also convergent? No. Okay. So it's 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 a strictly weaker thing. Um, you can create series that do converge, but their absolute value series don't converge. So we will see this later. But um, uh, if you look at the um, alternating harmonic series, okay, you take the harmonic series, but you put a you alternate the sign every single time, then that actually converges. But of course, the origin, of course, the absolute value of it uh, uh, diverges, right? Because when you take the absolute value of it, you get the harmonic series, which which diverges. Okay, so um, there are series that uh, converge, but not absolutely. Okay, and those those are called conditionally convergent series. Yeah. So um, if you have a if you have a set. If these guys are the convergent series, then the absolutely convergent ones are a special class inside, right? So if you're absolutely convergent, then you're definitely convergent because you're this special class of absolute, uh, your special class of convergent series. And then everybody else outside here is called con conditionally convergent. It just means you're not absolutely convergent. Yes. Okay, sorry. This is back to what we were sure. doing over there. I just want to make sure I understand yeah. why yeah, F sub n minus S sub n minus 1 is the same thing as A sub n. Yeah. So remember that, I'm sorry, I should have reminded the notation. S sub n means the sum from the A sub k is from, from k equals 1 to n. So it's the partial sum, the partial sum sequence, right? So when you take S sub n, that's the sum of these guys up to n. And then you subtract off the sum of the guys up to n minus 1. Oh, so it's just for n. Yeah, so you just get the last, you, you're stuck with the last term. You're left with the last term. Okay. Okay, other questions? 
looking. So these, these two things here are basically consequences of the Cauchy criterion, right? This, this corollary, the divergence theorem, and this, um, uh, this corollary. I should probably call this corollary also. Right? Corollary that absolutely convergent implies, implies convergent. So, so yeah, so, um, so, you know, one thing, you know, so if you have a, if you have a convergent se sequence, um, uh, no, I'm not going to say that, <laughs> sorry, um, actually, let me, let me just go on. No need to go too far afield. Okay. So, okay. So, um, okay. For just a second. Okay. Yeah. So, just for a second, we're going to deal with um, so-called non-negative series. And by that, I mean that the terms are all non-negative. Right. So you have some, you have some series, and the A's of n's are all non-negative. Non okay. They could be zero, but they're not, uh, uh, they're not negative. Okay. And so here's the, um, here's the main theorem that um, if A's of n is a non-negative series, then um, this thing converges if and only if um, the partial sum sequence is bounded. So I'm always going to use S of n as the partial sum sequence. I'm not going to rewrite it every time. OK, so you know, this, this, is, this is kind of nice, right? It says that um, to check the convergence of this thing, we just need to look if, if the sequence is bounded, right? Um, why is that? Um, the, what can you say about the partial sum sequence, right? Partial sum sequence is, you know, a1 plus everything up to, a, up to a n, right? Um, if I look at s n plus 1, then I'm adding on a n plus 1, right? And all the terms are bigger than or equal to 0, right? So what do I know about, about s n plus 1 with respect to s, s n? You just... It's bigger, <laughs> right? So this is a this is a monotonic sequence, right? So proof. Uh, obviously, so S n is a monotonically increasing sequence. Right? So um, Sn converges if and only if it's bounded. Right. So that's the end. <laughs> that's it. Right. Right. This thing converges means that the partial sum sequence converges. But this is a monotonic increasing sequence. Convergence is equivalent to, equivalent to being bounded. So um, now we're gonna uh, okay. So we we're gonna um, 
do one uh, uh, convergence test that you've seen before, the so-called comparison test. Okay. So um, you have some sequences, A sub n, C sub n, and D sub n. You have some sequences. And you know that, um, suppose you know that a sub n is less than or equal to c sub n. The absolute value of a sub n is less than or equal to c sub n um, for all n greater than some, some n, some n. Then, um, if the C sub n converges, then the A sub n must converge. So what this is saying in a picture right, is that you've got these C sub n's right, that are you know, non-negative numbers. And then you've got um, then you've got A sub n's that are trapped between these numbers and their negatives. Right? So the A sub n's you know, could be negative, but they're all trapped between c sub n and negative c sub n. Right? So the absolute value is, is absolute value is smaller than, than c sub n. If the c sub n, if the sum of the c sub n converges, then the a sub n must also converge. Okay. Um, okay. Um, maybe this will be uh, okay. Um, uh, should I let you try it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, why is there no absolute value around the C sub n? Uh, well, if you have this sort of condition, then that says that the C sub n are all are all positive mm -hmm. anyway. So you don't you know putting an absolute value around them doesn't doesn't change anything. These are all positive numbers. So. Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll let you tr I'll let you try and think about it. Okay, so um, uh, here, try this. So write down the Cauchy criterion for for this. Um, what is what does this mean in terms of the Cauchy criterion? Think about what this means in terms of the Cauchy criterion, and what this would mean in terms of the Cauchy criterion, and why this one would imply that.
Okay. So, um, uh, okay. So what is what does this mean, right? So proof C sub n converges by the Cauchy criterion. What does that mean, Charlie? Uh, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n with an n and m greater than n. Not exactly. There's, there exists an n such that if uh, and if they're bigger than n, then the absolute value of the summation from n to m of c sub n is less than epsilon. You probably want to say c sub k, okay. yeah, oh, right. because, yeah. because if you use n here and n here, it's confusing. Yeah. So you can make this things you can make this thing smaller than smaller than epsilon, right? Okay. And you want to show that um, that the uh, that the sums of the a sub n converge, right? That you want to show that um, uh, you can do something similar for the a sub n, right? Well, um, right, right. Um, how do we how do we get from from this statement to a statement about about the a sub n's, right? We want to show that this sort of thing is small, right? But what's the relation between these two things? None. Um, the, that sum of the a sub k is, mm -hmm. is less than the sum of the absolute values, or less than or equal to yeah. um, the sum of the the absolute value of the sum of absolute values. Yeah, I mean, the, this, the second one is kind of unnecessary, but yeah, yeah. it's true. Oh, um, yeah, and then because we know that the absolute values of the a sub k's are less than equal to the ck's mm -hmm. um, past the sum to n, then we can say that that's less than, or can we not make that jump yet? Well, I guess I guess to be careful, what you should say is that um, uh, then for n and m that are bigger than, let me call this one n n zero. Okay. Then for n and m that are bigger than uh, n zero and n, right? Then you can say that that this is true, right? Because the a sub n's are are smaller than the C sub n's past that point, right? And so that does it for you. So um, summation A sub k converges, and in fact, it converges absolutely, right? Because you see that the absolute value, the sum of the absolute values, converges. So there's a second part to the theorem that's basically um, just the contraposition of the, of the first part, um, and that is uh, I'm just going to put it up here. Um, if you have a sub n bigger than or equal to d sub n bigger than zero, again for all n greater than some past some point, then summation d sub n diverges implies that summation a sub n diverges. Right. But this is this is exactly the contraposition of the first statement. So um, right. Because the contraposition of this statement would be if the bigger guy converges, then the smaller guy converges. Right. If the bigger guy converges, then the smaller guy converges, and that's exactly what, what this is saying. Right. If you have this sort of relation, then if the sum of the bigger guys converges, then the sum of the smaller guys converge. So I'm not going to prove that. So that's just my contraposition. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, 
here's kind of an odd, uh, here is a, a theorem that you definitely have not seen before. Um, it doesn't, Rudin doesn't give it a name, but I'm going to call it uh, a lacunary theorem. Um, lacuna means a gap. Um, um, so it's a theorem about something with gaps. So you have um, a sub n, a uh, non-negative, non-increasing sequence. Then the sequence converges if and only if the sum of um, the sort of gapped sequence converges. This I'm, I'm, I'm lying to you a little bit right now, but. Uh, I mean, actually, I'm going to use quite seriously right now, but, but this is sort of the idea, okay, that in order to look at the sum, in order to consider the convergence of the, of the full, th full thing, you only need to consider the, the, the behavior, um, the sum of certain, certain things, like um, uh, instead of considering the sum of the full thing, all you need to do is consider the ones where the indices are powers of two. Okay, so you need to look at, at this, a4, a8. A16, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you, you need to you you need to consider this gapped gapped sequence. So here's here's the line. You do need to put a you need to multiply these guys by two. Multiply the terms by two, then k. Okay. But if you consider that, then that thing converges. Okay. Where does this two to the k come from? This two to the k is basically the number of, of terms that this guy represents, right? So this a four. Really, there are, there are four terms here, right? A8, there are eight terms here. A16, there's 16 terms that follow, right? So it's basically measuring the size of the, the number of terms in that, in that gap. OK. So um, right, you can, you can see that um, uh, um, you can see, for example, that um, uh, if you're looking at partial sums, if you're looking at partial sums, then um, then these guys these guys on the bottom are controlled by the guys on the top, right? Because um, basically what you're doing is these guys on the bottom, you know, you're, you're multiplying them by um, you know, this guy is multiplied by two. This guy is multiplied by four. This guy is multiplied by eight. This guy is multiplied by sixteen. Right? I can rewrite that as a two plus a two plus a four plus a four plus a four plus a four plus a eight plus etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Right? And you see what's going on. This is a non-increasing sequence. Right? So. Um, uh, uh, let's see, so that means basically it's decreasing. So these guys on the top, right, the A3 should be less than or equal to this A2, right? These guys should all be less than or equal to A, A4, right? And so you, I hope you get some sense that the partial sums of this guy are controlled by the partial sums of this guy. Okay, well, and then you can do something in the opposite direction as well. We'll, we'll, we'll do this, we'll start with this next time, at the beginning next time. But this turns out to be, I mean, this is kind of a weird looking theorem, but this turns out to be super useful, extremely useful in, in getting some of the results.